London in the 17th century was a bustling, overcrowded city with narrow streets and wooden buildings packed closely together. But in September 1666, a catastrophic event would change the city forever. The Great Fire of London. It all began in the early hours of September 2nd when a small fire broke out in a bakery on Pudding Lane, owned by Thomas Farriner. What started as a minor accident quickly spiralled out of control. Fueled by strong winds, the fire spread rapidly, leaping from house to house. Within hours, it engulfed entire streets, turning homes, shops and businesses into a blazing inferno. Terrified Londoners fled with whatever they could carry. But the fire moved faster than anyone could have imagined. The city was unprepared and firefighting efforts were primitive at best. Most people relied on buckets of water and tearing down buildings to create fire breaks. By September 3rd, even the Royal Exchange, a symbol of London's wealth and power, was consumed by flames. Iconic landmarks, including St Paul's Cathedral, were at risk. St Paul's Cathedral, then made of wood and under renovation, was no match for the fire. The intense heat melted the lead roof, causing molten metal to pour down the streets. After four days, the fire finally died down, leaving over 13,000 homes, 87 churches and numerous businesses in ruins. Miraculously, only a handful of lives were lost, but the city was devastated. The Great Fire of London was a turning point. Rebuilding the city required new approaches to architecture and fire safety. Sir Christopher Wren, one of the leading architects, played a crucial role in designing the new London including a grand, fire-resistant St. Paul's Cathedral. The fire led to the creation of wider streets, brick and stone buildings, and stricter building regulations, transforming London into a safer and more modern city. Today, the monument to the Great Fire of London stands as a reminder of both the devastation and the resilience of the city, a city that rose from the ashes stronger than before.